Lecture 28 begins our discussion and explanation of this unit hydrograph method. This is, I'm going to give the overall view as concepts, and then we will discuss and actually work through the unit hydrograph. The unit hydrograph is a definition. It's a direct runoff hydrograph one unit of rainfall, either an inch or a centimeter of excess rainfall, falling uniformly over a drainage basin at a constant rate for an effective duration. This is very important. What this basically is, the unit hydrograph is a, for a particular watershed, is how that watershed is gonna to respond to one inch of excess precipitation for a certain duration. So uh, the unit hydrograph for a 20 minute, one inch rainfall is gonna look different than a unit hydrograph for a one hour rainfall. Now the area underneath this, the total volume underneath this uh, hydrograph is one inch in both of these, but you can see the fun difference here. Look at the peak on the one hour unit hydrograph. That's totally different than it is for the 20 minute. See the, the peak is higher and it, uh, the, the water goes on to the uh, watershed and, and comes off much quicker uh, than it does for the uh, one hour unit hydrograph. So this is 20 minutes. So this effective duration is very important. What we're gonna use this unit hydrograph is, is sort of a template for how water uh, rainfall runoff process occurs in this watershed. And there, this unit hydrograph is unique from watershed to watershed. Now, with this unit hydrograph, we're going to um, use the linear concepts. That, and what we've got is uh, um, the aspect of proportionality and superposition. And so uh, we're going to get into that a little uh, more in a second. But proportionality says, if I've got a unit hydrograph, which would be one inch of rainfall, proportionality would say that, well, instead of having one inch, let's say you only had a half an inch we could multiply the ordinates of this unit hydrograph by 0 0.5 in all of its ordinates. And we would show another hydrograph that now would be no longer a unit hydrograph. It would be a half inch hydrograph. Consequently, we could all, or conversely, we could also say, well, this, what happens if we have two inches effective or we could multiply the ordinate on this unit hydrograph by the number two, and we end up getting a, a hydrograph that's for two inches, but it's double. And I've misdrawn this a little bit. You can see that maybe I should have drawn it a little closer to that. That's more like two times that. And you, But you get the idea. This is of proportionality. That's a linear system um, principle. Now, we also have the concept of superposition, which is a linear system concept. Let's back up here. Let's erase this. We have that linear system concept of, of superposition, which says, okay, well, if I've got half an inch of rain and I multiply it by my unit hydrograph, so for that half inch of rain, my hydrograph response would look like that. So that half an inch, let's say that this is a um, one hour unit hydrograph. So if I multiply a half inch of excess precipitation times every ordinate in the unit hydrograph, uh, I get a half inch response for that first increment one hour of, of half inch of rain. Let's say that then I have two inches of rain. And let's change the color here. If I have two inches of rain, next, but I, I don't start it to right here. I can just shift my unit hydrograph down and now I multiply that ordinate by two and I have something that looks like that. So from the two inches of rain, the blue hydrograph here is what would respond. The red hydrograph is for half an inch of rain, okay? Now by superposition, I can just add the ordinates of one hydrograph with the other and I get this composite hydrograph 
and let's draw that in like this. That looks like this. Oop, that didn't take it. I tried to change colors there. Okay, so it looks like this. So I've added the red and the blue, and I get this composite hydrograph that is the superposition using linear system concepts. It's just adding one hydrograph with the other. Okay, and so we we have that, and we're going to talk in, in a graphically. The interesting thing is I can describe that unit hydrograph, that linear system concept through something called the discrete convolution equation, where I can get this in, uh, in brown here. I, I represent that as my hydrograph ordinate, the final hydrograph, excess precipitation amounts times the unit hydrograph. That's what the U stands for. Now, uh, you know, you, you, you really, uh, are going to have to learn how to use this. There's a couple ways when we use this unit hydrograph that we can do things. We can use a, a tabular method, and I'll show you that in class. And or we can use this convolution equation. Either way. And so we're we're going to I'm going to show you how this breaks apart, and I'm going to show you how tabularly this would work as well. All right, so I want to remind you here that this unit hydrograph method becomes this model. We've got excess precipitation that we get. We apply that excess precipitation through this model of the unit hydrograph, and we get a total runoff hydrograph. That's what we're after, is this runoff hydrograph. Now, I've already, this particular slide I've already explained to you, and but it's here for your notes, and, and you can go back and recall but this is what we're talking about, the principle of proportionality and the principle of superposition. And so we'll go through here. And I think the, the graph uh, are, are, are a little more understandable than just seeing these words here. But, you know, you can come back to these words and kind of read through them yourself. Um, <clears throat> again, this unit hydrograph is one inch or, uh, of excess rain um, for a selected duration. Uh, if we were in the SI system, we would have one centimeter of uh, excess rain. Um, as we look at this, I'll, I'll go to the, the next slide, which is this one. This is going to kind of show you these things. This, I put this together in a spreadsheet. It's a little better in my hand drawing. But let's say that I had this very simplistic unit hydrograph, and I haven't talked about how we get that. Our subsequent lectures are gonna be, how do we get, get a unit hydrograph? And there's a, a number of ways to do that, but we'll talk about that later. But for now, you, we've got this unit hydrograph and the principle of proportionality says, well, this is one unit of rainfall. Principle of proportionality says that I can multiply every ordinate by some number, constant number. In this case, I'm using three inches of rainfall. And so every ordinate is multiplied by three. And you can see here in red, this is the hydrograph that results from one, three, three units or three unit, uh, three inches of rain that occurs. Uh, let, me, let me erase that. I'll do a little better job of, of putting that together. So let's put that rain starting right here and it lasts so that is three inches of rain that lasts whatever the effective duration we on this particular one we don't know what the duration the effective duration is but i will say that the duration of the rain has to match the duration of the hydrograph so if i have a 15 minute unit hydrograph i can only use that with 15 minute data for rainfall I want to really emphasize that point. So the uh, the effective duration or the duration of the unit hydrograph has to match the duration of my rain, rain time steps. Now, if I go in and so I've got that first increment of rain is, is three units or three inches in this case. And then actually this is, uh, let me uh, do a little better job here. Uh, So I'm gonna make that red. So I've got that first 
and it's a two hour rain effective duration. I can see that because I'm lagging the next rain starts at two inch, two hours in, okay, or two, two time units in. And so this is uh, my three inches of rain. Then I have the next two hours, I've got five, in, five inches. So let's put that in green. And so I have five inches of rain that occurs in the next two inches or the next two hours. And so you can see here, I've taken my unit out of graph. I started here when this rain starts along this period at two hours in, and I multiply that, I just shift the unit how to graph over and multiply every ordinate by the number five. So you can see here, I've done that. And that's what it looks like. Now, the, the superposition is adding the three inch hydrograph and the five inch hydrograph. So the, the amount in red here is my three inch hydrograph right here. And the amount in green is my five inch hydrograph. So I had an increment of three inches of rain. I had an increment of five inches of excess rain. Now the superposition adds the two. So until I get to two hours, the new composite uh, hydrograph, which is the superposition uh, elements, it's going to mimic exactly the red, the three inches, because I don't have any rain or I don't have any runoff responding to that next five inches of rain. Then all of a sudden I start to add here. I've got, you know, whatever the value is, looks like about 75. I add it to whatever I had for the, um, for the red, which is exactly matching. So now that comes up exactly 150. And so then I'm, I go on up here and I add value of the five inch hydrograph with this value of the three inch hydrograph that ends up being the peak at somewhere around 210. And then, you know, I add this value with this value and that equals that value, this value with this value equals that value, this with that equals that. And then at this point I go to zero on my three inch hydrograph. And now I'm just following the green five inch hydrograph on down. So basically in this graph, I've shown you both the, the issue of the proportionality and the superposition. And this is in a nutshell, how the unit hydrograph is applied. It's, it's not that difficult. Uh, it's, a, it's a very powerful concept. Uh, unit hydrographs have been used, been around for years and we use it a lot in, uh, in site design hydrology. A lot of the, the programs that you may encounter when you get out into consulting or agency work or whatever, you're gonna see that as an option for the, for the hydrology part, uh, especially in small water. This is just a little more, you know, this has, instead of having just two units of rain, this has got three units of rain here. You can see these are on, uh, looks like um, hourly, uh, amounts of rain. So we would have to make sure we had a one hour unit hydrograph to match our one hour of excess rain. And so we would multiply whatever the value is. Looks like here, it's like seven inches. So I get, this is my hydrograph for that seven inches of rain. Then the two inches uh, are the second hour of rain corresponds to four inches, but it doesn't start until one hour in. So basically in, in the red there, I multiply four times every bit of, every one of my unit hydrograph ordinates. And then my last increment of rain starts at two hours in. That's only, uh, looks like three inches. So I multiply three times my unit hydrograph there and I get in green and then I add it up in this, this here in, in the black is my convoluted hydrograph for these three increments of rain. So there's some basic assumptions to remember about the unit hydrograph method. Again, you know, you have to always remember what's what's underlying the assumptions of any model that you're using. The first thing is that you've got excess rain has been constant intensity for the effective duration. So that means that um, if I've got a 20 minute unit hydrograph or I've got a one hour unit hydrograph, that means that we have to assume that the excess rain is going to fall of a constant intensity across that time increment. So it behooves you to have a smaller effective duration 
because then you come closer to matching this assumption. And as I've already laid out in the rainfall lecture, um, that's kind of hard. You know, rain is very uh, non-uniform as it falls, uh, that may or may not hold true. But again, uh, it becomes more a better, a better, a better assumption the smaller the drainage area is that you're applying your unit hydrograph. The next assumption is that the excess rainfall is uniformly distributed. So we've got this constant intensity. So that means that one inch, that when it starts at the beginning of the, of the increment of time for the rain to when the unit hydrograph is applied, it's a constant intensity during that period, okay? Again, one hour versus 20 minutes or whatever the effective duration of the duration of the The next thing is that rain is uniformly distributed across the entire basin. Again, rainfall is non-uniform. And so the bigger watershed you get, the more you're gonna be in violation of this assumption because you know, if it's starting, it, it needs to be, it, if to truly hold to the, the uh, assumptions of the unit hydrograph theory, it needs to be falling everywhere in the watershed at the same rate and for the entire time uh, uniformly distributed everywhere. The next thing is the base time of the direct runoff hydrograph for the duration of, of, of runoff uh, is, is constant, which means what? It means that if you look at this, let's go back to this slide where we have a unit hydrograph. It means this is my base duration in this case. This is my unit hydrograph here. And I'm saying that no matter what, the unit hydrograph has the same eight hour duration. And you can see that on these subsequent uh, 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 illustrations, there is eight hours and then I put my next rain, it starts at one, ends at nine. So that's still eight hours. Uh, the last increment of rain starts at two hours into the, the total storm and goes to 10. So again, that base value equals to eight hours. It does not change no matter how saturated the basin conditions become. All right, and so, um, the concept is a linear system, as we've mentioned. Concept of proportionality exists, which means that the ordinates of the direct runoff hydrograph of a common base are directly proportional to the total amount of direct runoff. So that's the proportionality aspect. That just basically means that the unit hydrograph ordinates times that constant, whatever, you know, five inches of rain, three inches of rain, that works. And um, the next assumption is for a given watershed. The hydrograph results from a given access ring reflects unchanging characteristics of the watershed. Again, uh, we don't allow for any kind of temporal variation that's going to be caused in the hydrology response based on maybe the watershed gets more and more saturated. We're saying that, you know, once that rain starts, that, that hydrology is going to behave the same at the start of the rainfall event as the end. Uh, the next event or the next uh, assumption is the time distribution of surface runoff uh, from a given storm period is independent of concurrent runoff from previous storm periods. Again, these kind of things, five and six, kind of fit together. Um, that um, you, you basically, once it starts raining and you have uh, proportionality there and you've got superposition there, we're, we're not going to have any changes to the response uh, of the rainfall runoff hydrology in that watershed. Now let's talk about this discrete convolution equation because this is very useful to understand how this works. And let's break these components down. So the unit hydrograph, if I have, um, let's just, I've got a unit hydrograph and I'm just gonna give you a quick easy one here. So time zero, uh, one uh, time step one, two, three, four. So let's say that we only have uh, four, let's go to five here. So we've got zero and let's go 10, 20, uh, 15, 10, zero. So we've got four non-zero unit hydrograph terms. That's just, you know, okay, that looks like this. This is my unit hydrograph. I got four terms there, zero on the end. And that's my unit hydrograph, all right? So that's the use. So this would be uh, I is equal to one, I is, this is zero, I is equal to two, I is equal to three, I is equal to four, I is equal to five. 
okay? So I've got four non-zero terms, which means that uh, when we go through this, you know, precipitation value multiplied by a zero is gonna be zero, doesn't matter. Now, um, the time interval, uh, precipitation time interval, that's going to be designated by this value of M. And let's say that for just for this particular example, um, I've, I've got only two values of rain increment. Excuse me. So I've got, let, let's say I've got 0 0.5 and I've got, uh, I don't know, 0 0.7. Those are my two values of excess rain. So this would mean that my value of uh, M is uh, total value in capital M is equal to two. And uh, so uh, I'm going through here and I'm saying, all right, um, we're gonna go and look at this and say, all right. So now let, let's, let's go through and, and try to explode these equations that we have down here. So if I say, okay, I is equal to one. So that means that Q1, that's my N, okay? So N is equal to one. Let's, let's get that wrong. So the Q1, so that's equal to the sum of uh, M is equal to one to N, so long as the N is less than or equal to capital N. Again, capital N, Two in this particular example. So then we're going to go from one to one when when n is equal to one here. So I've got what I've got p one u. What's n is one minus m was is one plus one. So that means that's p one u one. Okay, and you can see that that works out right there exactly. Now the next thing is I move to n is equal to two. N is equal to two. All right, so now I, I go back to this um, convolution equation. Let me uh, erase some things here. Get some room to write. Now I've got um, n is equal to two. All right, so I plug that in and I say, okay, the Q2 is equal to the sum of m is equal to one to two, so long as it's less than or equal to, to capital M. Well, what is capital M in this case? That's equal to two. So I can go one to two, PM U N minus M plus, well, that's equal in this particular case, uh, P one U N is one minus M, which is one. plus one, plus P2, right? Times U2 minus let's see here, two, oh, this should be two, sorry. Because N is equal to two at this particular one. So this is N, this is U2 minus M, which is one plus one. Now it's u2 minus two plus one, all right? So in this particular equation, again, reminding you n is equal to two. So anywhere you see a two or an n, that's gonna be a value of two. And anywhere you see an m, that's following the summation sign, right? And so I've got m equals one here, p1, two minus one plus one plus p2. Again, this is you know the m value. And so that equals to what? That's P2, or I'm sorry, P1, U2, plus P2, U1. And it's reflected down here. Now, let's er erase a little bit here where I get some room. And let's look what happens in this particular example when n is equal to three. Well, that's going to be Q3 is equal to one to n or equal to two. 
right? Well, n is equal to three, so we only can go up to two here, right? Because the n value, which is three, but we are trumped here by the fact that the n, capital M value is two, because that's the number of non-zero rainfall increments. We only have these two rainfall increments, right? And so I go through and I say, okay, that's zero, uh, a sum of M is equal to one to two of PM U three minus M plus one. Again, the N is what the ordinate of the discharge is. So that's what, that's equal to P one U three minus one plus one plus P two U uh, three minus two plus one. Again, the M value is going to be part of the summation one to two. And so that's nothing more than P1 U3 plus P2 U2. And we just keep going through like that. Now, uh, one thing I wanna point out to you, let me uh, see if I can get rid of this uh, right here where I can see, is that the total number of non-zero values in the discharge convolution equation, the big big QN is equal to capital M plus CU minus one. Well, CU is equal to this non-zero unit hydrograph terms. In this case, CU is equal to four. So we're gonna have a total of what? N is equal to, we had two non-zero rainfall values plus CU, which is going to be four minus one. So that's going to be equal to a, a total number of five non-zero discharge ordinates in this, if we do the convolution equation. And you can see that, you know, and, and one thing I want to uh, encourage you is make sure that you can go through and yourself up equations because knowing how to the convolution equations is very powerful when you do this because yes, you can get by with doing it in the tabular manner and I'm gonna show you that next, but also being able to do a quick check of yourself using these equations is also very helpful. So let's, uh, let's look at this. So in particular case, you can see that we go P1, U1 for Q1. This is a really good slide to keep in, in, in the back pocket and also to, to basically make sure that you can explode this convolution equation into a series of these equations to make sure you can work the problem, all right? Now, um, this is a, a graphic that shows kind of how this uh, unit hydrograph business works in a, in a graph and, and, and basically what the components are of the, of the discharge uh, hydrograph as it's working its way through. And so I've got, in this case, I've got one, two, three non-zero excess precipitation terms. Here's my unit hydrograph and I've got six values, one, two, three, four, five, six values, non-zero unit hydrograph. I lag that, so the first precipitation value is is going to be times the each ordinate on the unit hydrograph. The next precipitation value P2, see that I just lagged, I've lagged the unit hydrograph over to start at the same time as the second rainfall value does. And then the third unit hydrograph, I'm lagging over there. Now I haven't applied the, the superposition to these, or I mean the proportionality to these yet, but that's done down here in this in this graphic, as you can see. And let me I get this control bar that keeps popping up in the way. And you can see, well, if I multiply P1, P1 here by U1, that shows up right there. That's my very first equation point. And then if I go to the next unit, you can see, well, P1 times U2, P1 times U2 plus P2 times U1. So there's the U1, there's the P2. That's this part right here. So you can see, this is my total discharge at that point. This is the superposition of adding the impact of the first rain uh, 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 amount times the second value of unit hydrograph times the second rainfall amount times the first ordinate of the unit hydrograph. Again, this is kind of an interesting thing to look at 
you know, we're, you know, we're that uh, precipitation at time two and that unit hydrograph uh, at uh, the U3 ordinate in that first uh, part there, where that's actually making its um, way through, you can see that right and actually that should be uh, P2, U3, uh, I would say that's basically, this is kind of mis misleading here. This gray part should actually be down here and you're, you, you should say this is gray uh, in this. And so this, that's where it shows up right here, just to make it clear. Okay, uh, I'm gonna work as an example problem in class, uh, but I'm gonna also kind of show it to you a little bit here because I think it, it uh, uh, will help you a, a, just a, a slight amount here. As you look at this, um, when we apply this, uh, I can, you know, I've got, uh, you know, precip values here. I'm going to use a fee index equal to 0 0.3 inches per hour. That's right there. And um, I'm, so I've got the total precip. I'm going to have to take the, the value of the unit hydrograph, I mean, the, uh, the fee index off of there. So, you know, 0 0.3 times the uh, rain times the, the, the uh, fee times whatever the time step is here, the Delta T equals one hour. So, you know, it becomes 0.3 inches uh, every hour that's abstracted and infiltrated. And so you can see this excess, excess precip amounts. And then um, here's my unit hydrograph. I'm, 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 I'm labeling it right here, right? So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, non-zero terms. So C sub U is equal to six. Here I've got uh, one, two, three, four, non-zero uh, excess precipitation things. So capital M is equal to four. So if I look at this, I've got capital N is my total number of non-zero final discharge values, that's what? That's going to be capital M plus CU minus one. And so I've got uh, I've got four plus six minus one. I'm going to have nine values, non-zero of the uh, rainfall, again, uh, of the total flow. And again, that comes back to this equation right here in the slide. And I go through and I take the convolution equation. I explode that. And I get these values. You know, you can see the P1, U1. So my first value, Q1, is P1 times U1. Well, you know, P1 is 0 0.2 inches of excess precip. U1 is 10. So two CFS, Q, Q, Q feet per second, is going to my very first ordinate. So if I look, I have time is zero. Well, I'll get to the first hour. And then I've got two CFS is my first value. And then I go to my second, uh, or my, my second ordinate, uh, one, zero, um, here, and I explode this convolution equation. I end up getting P1, U2 times uh, plus P2, U1, add those together, and now I've got, you know, 27 CFS. And then I just keep going through, and you can uh, see here on the example, you can just work this through yourself. You can kind of see how they go. And uh, that's using the convolution equation. Uh, uh, I can also do it in a form. This is the exact same problem right here with these values. You can see here's my 0 0.2, 0 0.7, 0 1.2, 0 0.2. I've got 10, 100, 200 for the unit hydrograph. So what I've done is I've just pulled them over into here. Here's my unit hydrograph. Now, what I can do is I've got my, uh, instead of using those equations, I can do this in tabular form. So now what I do is I write my unit hydrograph out here and uh, 0.2 is my first order of, of excess precipitation. So you can see down this column, I've multiplied each one of the unit hydrograph ordinates by the value 0.2 and they make it over into this column. So far, so good. Now I move to that next value of X precipitation. It's our into it. Here, that T is equal to zero 
And I, I you know, basically this was T is equal to zero. That, that goes just like that. Now for my next increment of rain, that's starting at T is equal to one, which means I need to take this unit hydrograph where it's zero and I need to start that zero at the value of one hour. Do you see how I'm lag this? And so then the 10 would correspond down here to the two, the 100 to the three, uh, the third hour, et cetera. And what I do is I multiply this value of excess precipitation times those ordinates. But again, you can see that I don't even put anything in that first row because this rainfall started at the second row, one hour in. So I put 0.7 times the zero, that is a zero. 0.7 times the 10, that's seven, right? You see, it, it's sort of like, it, we're, you see how the table progresses down? And now I have 0 0.7 times 100, that's down here at 70. It's not on the same row as where the unit hydrograph is. It's down, down by one. Then 0 0.7 times 200, 140, so on and so forth. If I, as I get all the way to zero down here, that translates to right there. I move over to my third, non-zero excess precipitation, which starts at two hours into the rainstorm. And so I'm going to multiply 1.2 times a zero, but look where I put it. This is actually should just be marked out. I think it confuses people. So 1.2 times zero is the zero, but it's starting down here at two hours into the storm. If you look across there, then 1.2 times 10, that shows up right here. 1.2 times 100 shows up here, so on and so forth. And then I get to the fourth non-zero value. Again, I've lagged these. This is starting three hours in, zero right here. So that's 0 0.2 times zero, that gets entered there. 0 0.2 times 10, that gets entered there, et cetera. So now I've gone through and I've accounted for all my rainfall. Now all I need to do is go across the columns and add them up. And that becomes my direct runoff uh, hydrograph. So zeros all the way across here to zero. Two, everything else is zero there, that becomes two. 20 plus seven, that's 27. 40 plus 70 plus 12, that's 122. You get the idea. And so these values is the tabular form of that. And you can see that it matches exactly what we had on our convolution equation. Again, I recommend that you know how to do this. I have given a problem in the past where we have something called a derived unit hydrograph. That's a bonus lecture for you this, this semester. You're not required to do it, but that, that's something that's possible that I would do. In fact, uh, this will be for other semesters. So there are semesters that I will require them to have this equation to be able to back into values of the unit hydrograph from uh, observations of discharge and precipitation, much like we did the fee index method. All right, that concludes.